old age makeup is one of the most common makeups that we are usually asked to do within the world of theater. So I'm just going to make a um, series of videos that's just going to explain to you how you would do a really basic age makeup. Um, obviously different characters, um, different situations are going to call for slight variations of things, but um, hopefully these kind of like tips and tricks will kind of help you um, just get a good start when you are working in the world of age makeup. So the first thing that you want to do, you want to make sure, um, obviously your skin is prepped and clean, um, just like you would with your corrective makeup. So I don't typically, a lot of times people are like, well, should I go through and like color correct and do everything like that? Um, when I'm doing age makeup, I don't, I never do that. Um, unless of course, like again, if it's like, you know, somebody has like a face tattoo or it's something like that that I need to cover, then obviously you would want to cover that. Um, but as far as like covering my acne or like my under eye circles, I don't worry about that when I'm doing age makeup simply because I, to me, when I am doing like middle age or old age, extreme old age, whatever it is, it's essentially the opposite of what I do when I do my corrective makeup. So instead of trying to kind of like brighten things and like make all of my shadows on my face go away, I'm actually trying to like bring them out. So to me, um, I don't see why I should waste the makeup trying to make my under eye circles look great when I'm just going to put makeup over it. Um, so right now I have no makeup on. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put on foundation. I think I'm mostly going to focus just on this side of my face. Um, but I will go ahead and apply foundation all over just in case there's a few things I want to show um, on the other side. So um, I'm mostly going to be using my own personal makeup for this, but if I'm not, I'm going to be scooping out a palettes and um, putting it onto a piece of palette paper just so things can stay um, as sanitary as possible. Um, so I'm going to do this mostly with cream makeup, but I am also going to show you um, how you could do it with different like pencil liners um, as well as powders. Um, so that's why I think it's also a good idea to kind of just have um, my entire face covered. So I'm just going to really kind of like haphazardly um, throw this foundation on um, as per my usual. But again, we're really going to focus on this side. Um, and for this, I'm not necessarily worrying a ton about it being perfect coverage. It's really just to kind of give us like that mid-tone and that base. I know sometimes with age makeup, I think some people actually just do... Um, their highlight color and their shading and their wrinkles. I think that can work too. I think it just depends on how um, intensely you are going to put um, your makeup on. If you're trying to go for something that's more subtle, you're probably obviously going to want a lot more of that like mid-tone that would be your foundation showing. But if you're doing something that's like a really like dramatic like operatic makeup or something, then you may actually um, benefit from just using like a lot of people will start um, their makeup with just like their highlight and then they apply shadow over that so that might be easier if you're doing something that's really really dramatic but um, for me personally I always like to put on foundation um, just because I like to have a nice like gradient of color um, and not just have it be just my highlight color and just my shadow color um, you'll see through this I like to mix colors I use a bunch of different colors when I work um, and I just feel like it always helps give you a more natural effect um, so I think one thing like a common misconception um, with age makeup is that we just have to send somebody on stage with like these really intense like lines and shapes on their face when in reality um, I like to think of it as like yes you can still have intensity but um, you don't have to have things that are just these really awful like unblended lines I like to think of things as like having a blended line so um, you'll hear me talking about that a lot I cannot stand I think and I think that's why a lot of like theater makeup gets a really bad um, reputation is that they just think that it's like these awful straight lines like drawn on somebody's face and they're just on stage and that's the only way you can do it um so that you can see the makeup when that's really not true at all um you can get definition and you can get the shapes that you need and get the effects that you need and still blend and like feather out your edges so that's something um I will try my best to show you today and hopefully um you'll be able to see so obviously the smaller the stage and the closer um, the audience is to you and the less intense the lighting, kind of like the more natural things can be. So if this were going to be old age makeup for like film and TV, it would be a very different process um, than what we're going to be talking about. But for theater, generally, you have to make it a little bit more intense than what um, you would want if somebody was up close to you. Um, so what we're doing today might look a little bit, a little bit off um, when you're looking at me just this close and on screen, but you have to imagine from most theaters, you're going to be on a large stage, you're going to be under much brighter lights um, than I'm under right now, um, and then you're also going to be really far away from people a lot of the times too, and you might be in like this big costume and a wig and like this huge set, so you have to usually do a little bit more um, with your makeup to help you kind of stand out 
um, amongst all of those things. So I now that I have my like rough um, foundation application on, you can see like I didn't really spend a lot of time um, putting it on my eyelids or color correcting over my eyelids just because I'm gonna want them to be discolored for this. So um, I just wouldn't spend the time um, the time doing that because usually with theater you've got 30 minutes to get completely in your makeup, hair, and costume um, unless you come earlier than that to do it. So it's good if you can kind of get things down um, into a faster way. So as I said before, some people like to start age makeup by blocking out all of their highlights. So your highlights are going to be the parts that you want um, to be more prominent and kind of pop out. And then all of our shadows and contours are going to be the things that we kind of want to recede. So that's going to be um, our like wrinkles and sagging skin and everything. That's going to come um, from those kinds of um, shapes and colors and things. Me personally, I see shadows a lot more easily than I see highlights. So I always go in and I add um, all my shading in first and then I blend it out and then I go back in and add in highlights. Um, I really do think it's a matter of personal preference. I think that you can arrive at the same look um, without following the exact specifics of the way I do it or the way someone else does it. I think as long as you are putting the colors where they need to go and they are the correct colors for your skin tone and undertone, then you are going to be in a good place. Um, I think a lot of times people don't know where to start as far as like colors for old age makeup go. Um, so what I found is that if you already know your corrective makeup, because usually when you're in school um, and you are learning your stage makeup, you usually, you usually learn your corrective makeup first and then you learn your stage makeup um, that's more like specialized like your old age. Um, so I like to use whatever the person's like highlight and contour color is when they do corrective makeup. I start there with age um, and tell them let's look at that and then if that's not intense enough then you go up and down from there because sometimes you know um, in order to get these wrinkles to show up sometimes they have to be several shades darker than what um, your actual skin tone is as opposed to like your contour which might only be a couple of shades darker but if you literally have no idea where to start if you start with colors that you know work for you um, you can look at those and say okay so I just need to be in this same color family just a little bit deeper or I need to be in this same color family and just a little bit brighter um, and I feel like that makes things seem a lot, um, it's just a little bit easier. I think it's just hard when you have no idea where to start. Um, and I think that that's one of the, the easiest ways to start. Um, so for me, I already know that like my basic contour color, um, which, so this is a wheel, um, that Krylon makes and it's technically like their old age wheel. So this center color is pretty close to like my typical contour color for age makeup. I have found on myself, it's just not intense enough for something that's going to need to show up on stage. So I usually end up mixing, um, both of these colors and then also a little bit of this purple, um, which I will talk more about like adding in purple for like accent colors and things, um, to create kind of my perfect shading color. So you don't necessarily need to mix like a thousand things together. I really like to mix colors. I have a lot of palettes. Um, and not necessarily as many individual colors since I am more used to doing other people's makeup um, than just my own. But if you have just like one color you know works, that's perfect. Um, a lot of times like there's like different concealer wheels like this is just, um, if I can open it, a regular, I should always pre-open things before these videos. Um, this is just like a regular concealer wheel um, that Krylon makes. I found that not only is this great when I'm doing corrective makeup on people, but it can actually be really helpful um, for age makeup because what I found is in a lot of like the pre-made um, stage makeup kits is that the colors they give you for aging, um, they're very, they are not always correct. So like um, you end up getting colors that are very, very red. And while I do think it is important to have a shading color um, that gives you warmth, if you are too warm, especially if it's like somebody, I see it a lot in the kits for like the fair to medium skin. Um, if it's too warm, it just kind of turns you like orangey and that just kind of all blends all the makeup together and you don't really get that same definition. Whereas if I stick with something that gives me a little bit of warmth so that it doesn't turn gray, but it's cool enough to still cast a shadow, that's kind of like the exact world that you like want to be in. So that's why a lot of times I do find myself mixing colors or I add in purple um, or you'll see me do later on, I go back in with um, powders and I kind of tone everything down um, and then I notice a lot in the kits for deeper skin tones they give um, this color misty violet so this is really popular it's like a deep purple um, and it's a little bit cooler so it does work really well for some people but if somebody is really really warm if you put a really really cool shadow on them that's just gonna gray them out so I think sometimes like the standards are a good place and an okay place to start but sometimes you might need to add in a little bit of your foundation and a little bit more um, of your like highlight or contour or whatever it is just because these pre-made colors are not always going to be um, the perfect color for you so that's always something to kind of keep in mind um, you always want to be thinking about your undertones and your skin tone um, and that's why I do like to teach corrective first just because I think you have to understand first 
um, what looks good on you to know um, how to put everything on, if that makes any sense. Um, so I think in this part of the video, we're just going to focus on, um, we'll probably just do like my forehead and maybe like a little bit of face shading and then we'll do other videos to kind of focus on like the eyes and mouth and nose and everything. Um, so as far as old age makeup goes, when it's into like the elderly phase of old age makeup, it's usually either considered like round old age or it's considered um, sunken old age. So generally sunken just means that we kind of want everything to like cave in um, and round is usually when you're going to have more of the like hanging skin for lack of better words so that might be somebody who's like has a lot of jowls or things are really drooping as opposed to like caving in I feel like usually when I do um stage makeup like that I feel like it's like a healthy combination of the two like I don't think unless it specifically says like this character needs to be round old age or like this character should be sunken or it's like obvious in the script how they're supposed to look I feel like I just kind of go with like what I feel like that person's face would age like like for me like my like little folds right here these are pretty pronounced so probably when I age it's gonna go down like this but then I have really high cheekbones so this is probably gonna cave in a little bit um so it's also really important I think that's actually another good thing to think about is when you're doing age makeup like it's important to have research I always encourage my students to have research just because it's kind of interesting to see um different wrinkles that kind of exist out in the world but really if you are doing makeup on your own face you need to follow like the natural pattern of what your face already is so you know you'll always see people doing age makeup and like they lift up their eyebrows and stuff so if I follow all the natural wrinkles that I already have that's gonna look much more natural than if I try to guess and draw them in um, so not everybody when they lift up their forehead or move their face around is gonna have um, that kind of level of wrinkles especially if you are younger um, and learning this you may not have that yet so of course it is okay to kind of like guess and put things where you think they will go but still try to do it in a way that makes sense for your face shape like um you know connecting a line all the way across my forehead when i already have a larger forehead is probably not going to be the best looking thing on stage um so that's why it is important have your research but also take time and kind of study your own face um and just kind of take into account like natural shadows and things that you already have so that's why i do like to say think about what you did for corrective makeup and just kind of do the opposite and that will really help you get um a good idea of how your age makeup should be i think actually so to keep this video from not being too long um We'll just kind of call it and call this like our little like intro um, to age makeup video and then we're going to start in on our shadows in the next one.